This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Ali, Fear Eats the Soul from 1974, directed by Rainier Werner Fassbinder. The tagline for this film, RJ, Mm -hmm. Todos Somos Ali. What? Emmy Karowski, a cleaning lady, is lonely Mm. in her old age. Her husband died years ago, and her grown children offer little companionship. One Mm. night, she goes to a bar frequented by Arab immigrants and strikes up a friendship with a middle-aged mechanic, Ali. Their relationship soon develops into something more, and Emmy's family and neighbors criticize their spontaneous marriage. Mm. (laughs) Criticize. Criticize. Mm -hmm. Soon, Emmy and Ali are forced to confront their own insecurities about their future. Hmm. So, RJ... Uh, mm-hmm. this is a movie that I'd seen once before and okay. not even like super long ago, maybe before I just had started to log things on Letterboxd. Mm-hmm. I, I remember this because I bought a copy of the DVD at a video store that was going out of business in town. And, uh, I, I happened mm. to go there the day that they started their clearance sale. I walked straight to that foreign film section because I know they're loaded with, with criterions mm-hmm. and there it was along with like about 15 other movies and they were selling them all for like two ninety nine a piece. Pretty sweet deal. So you got all, all E for two ninety nine. Yep. Ollie for two ninety nine. And you know what? I didn't even watch that DVD this time because it's on the criterion channel. What? And better quality. You think? I think it was, and this is like, it's sometimes hard to tell if they've upgraded everything to like 720p or HD. I know like Throne mm-hmm. of Blood looked a lot better streaming than on the DVD because mm-hmm. I believe it was the HD, but yeah, there's those things. So I just kind of went with it because it was right there. I've got this yeah. Amazon Fire Stick. I might as well <gasps> get some use out of it. I mean, I've might got, as well try. I've got my, uh, my subscriber uh, charter member thing. I mean, I better, Ooh. you know... <laughs> You should get a Prince Albert with that thing. Oh, <laughs> do you remember that? Well, I mean, Jared, I'm not judging you on your lifestyle. I'm just saying, okay. like, I feel like you'd be well, into I, that I, kind I, of thing. Well, I know you shouldn't be judging anybody. What else are you supposed to do with those fucking things? I don't know. I just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, uh, I remember watching this movie at the time and liking it, and mm-hmm. I, you know, didn't think about rewatching it anytime soon. But here's sure. that here's the opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as Rainier Werner Fassbinder, um, mm-hmm. RJ, RJ, you got any opinions on uh, him at this point? Are you, big, are, you, are, you are you are you you're a big fan? First time, long time. It's wow. the first I've seen. Wow. Okay. So first time, short time. First time, <laughs> never time, never time. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's a first for me. Honestly, uh, I've only seen three movies by uh, Fastbinder Total. That's it. And most of those have been fairly recent other than Ali. Um, 13 yep. Years of a Moon, I think it's called. And uh, just the other week, I watched The Third Generation, which is a movie about the Red Army faction. And mm-hmm. it's kind of a kind of a comedy. Anyway, he has a very particular film style that I don't think is actually on display here. This movie actually is pretty well a straight uh, melodrama in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I agree. Reading about the movie, it seems like he uh, was a fan of the Douglas Sirk films, and mm-hmm. he wanted to make his own uh, kind of homage to, like, the movies that we've talked about, Douglas Sirk, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, kind of that All That Heaven Allows kind of strain. Mm-hmm. We all know those. We remember. I, I mean, I do. Y- you know, you, you remember you, you remember liking those movies, right? What was Yeah, I, I, I thought those movies were pretty good. What was the Julianne Moore... Uh... Far from heaven. Far from heaven. Yeah, yeah. That that, I, I, that another... one was wasn't as good, but wow. I, I did like those Douglas Sirk movies. Yeah, the, the actual Douglas Sirk movies. Yeah, the real ones. And um, uh, I mean, as far as a remake goes, I think All V is better than All That Heaven Allows. Uh, yeah, is I'd, 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 I'd definitely say that. Yeah, who wouldn't? I mean, well, we might find out, but right. Yes. So, mm-hmm. uh, so this is a rewatch for me. And okay. this movie like sets the mood like immediately. I'm not Ooh. sure who the singer is, uh, but it's got the like kind of. I'm assuming it might be Moroccan music. Uh, when I was something looking, like that. yeah, I, I think I saw something pop up on a YouTube search when I was looking up uh, musical p- possibilities for this episode. Uh, mm-hmm. Saba, I think, was the name of maybe the singer of this. And so you have mm-hmm. that. You have this music that is over these like wet, dreary streets of. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berlin. Uh, I'm, 
I'm thinking this is Berlin set. Mm-hmm. And uh, it opens, the next shot is this scene with these people reacting to a woman walking into a bar. There's no, it's, there's no setup. There's no prelude stuff. That's all going to come later. You're just thrown mm-hmm. into this movie with a bunch of people standing around, sitting around in this dreary bar with like the, some of the saddest looking women <laughs> with like, just like their makeup. They just look like their lives are shit. Like their, their hair is like tell, out of sorts. Tell me more. <laughs> I have, I have told you everything. Okay. Um. So it has this tone immediately. And then mm-hmm. there's this like old lady, this Emmy woman. I mm-hmm. looked up uh, the actress. Um, she was 64 when this movie was made or released anyway. I mean, there's no real uh, inclination but... of what age she is. But, no. Uh, like 64, I, I mean, that's it's yeah. not unbelievable for what she's playing, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, um, yeah, Bridget Mira. So she, she's in this. And she's just like, you know, I walk by this bar all the time. And I just like, you know, wanted to see what it was like on the inside. She orders a Coke. Yeah, she, a cola. Yeah. Well, cola, Jerry. Do you ever indulge in a little cola? Not really. No. No. What about diet cola? Oh, I, I, I was a, a deep, heavy user of the d- diet sodas, but I've actually, ah. uh, I've gone like almost two months without uh, having a drink of it. Wow. What do you drink now instead? Uh, a little, uh, little fizzy bub. A little, little H two O. You ever carbonate that H two O? No. No need, my friend. Wow. So, uh. Allie Fury's the mm-hmm. soul. She sits down, she's having a drink, and uh, we we got, cut back to the other side of the bar of the regular inhabitants. We're introduced mm-hmm. to Ollie and his friends, uh, and there seems to be this like other woman that's kind of like hitting on him, and it's like, hey, why, why don't you why don't you go back to my place? He's like, no, I don't wanna, and it's like, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. Cock broken. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Excuse me. Cock broken. Is that a quote? Yes, that is a quote. Okay. Or cock broke, cock broken. Mm-hmm. So he seems to be getting annoyed with his friends. And so they're like, hey, why don't you go dance with her? Huh? And then she's like, okay. And he goes mm-hmm. over and says, hey, you want to dance? <laughs> and they get up and dance. And they start having a conversation. And it's like, wait, hey, I'll walk you home. You're a you're a sweet old lady. I should uh, make sure you're taken care of. And he walks her home because he's sick of his friends. He's tired of these mm-hmm. people. All they probably do is drink and gamble and spend their money they make uh, while they're living in Germany uh, on their, you know, temporary visas just to mm-hmm. take the cheap work that the German people won't take themselves. And they get the abuse that comes their way from uh, a lot of people who are just kind of ignorant, racist folk. What kind of people are those, Jer? Those kind. Those people. Um, I think I follow. I could use a little bit more info, but I think okay. I'm 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 yeah. piecing it together. So, uh, Allie and Emmy they go back to her apartment building, and she's kind of like she's lonely. She's like, "Come back mm-hmm. to my room. We'll have I have some some cognac, some brandy up there." And they do, mm-hmm. and uh, starts talking about like, "Hey, I've got to leave soon. I got to catch a train. I I live in this apartment with like." It's what five other guys, and it's like super small. We all just basically sleep on top of one another. It's not so great. She's like, "Well, you can just sleep, stay here the night." And he's like, "Okay." And then you know they're all going to bed, and he just kind of pokes his head in the bedroom door, and he's like, "Yeah, pretty lonely." She's like, "Oh, come over here." And then we got to transition <laughs> to darkness, <laughs> and then light, and there's a shirtless Ollie in bed, and there she is getting out of bed, and she's like, "Oh my god, oh my god." What have I done? <laughs> and uh, they start having breakfast and they're hanging out and, you know, making plans to maybe uh, hang out some more. And what do you think happens from there, Jer? Well, this this relationship, this winter fall arrangement, this not even a Harold, like Harold and Maude is like spring and winter. This is, I guess, mm-hmm. winter and fall because uh, Ollie's 39 at this time, mm-hmm. it's just not that crazy. Uh, I didn't think it was that wild either. Like, because uh, I was like, okay, a little summer winter relationship here. But summer, like, there's another season in there. That's what it is, isn't it? Winter fall. Well, there's. I we, thought it was summer winter because I don't, I don't it was know. so drastic. It, it, it depends. Well, summer, winter would be older than fall. Summer, somewhere in between. Spring, though, it's like whoa. That's uh. What that's if what, it was a 
<laughs> that's a what? <laughs> that, that's that's a oh, we just not go there. What if it was like an autumn? Autumn. Winter? Well, that sounds that sounds nicer than fall. That sounds a little nicer. Autumn. Do you do you know any autumns in real life? People. Yeah. There, there's. I know a guy named Autumn. A guy named Autumn. Yeah. Like the season. Yeah. How does he feel about that? He seems fine with that. Okay. I, I think he might have even chose that name. Oh. Okay. All right. I mean, well, whatever. I mean, if I could, I would probably be named Pepperoni. Well, you could. You no, no one's stopping you. Yeah, but uh, I just gotta pay that fee. You know, it's just go through the paperwork. Those, it's one of those things. It's like, am I there yet? Not yet. Yeah, no, I don't know. I thought the the little summer winter relationship. I didn't think it was like too far out. I think it was no. it was just just enough. Like where the Harold and Maude thing. Yeah. I I like Harold and Maude. I like Hal Ashby, but the Harold and Maude thing. I was like. I'm not sure what the what's happening here. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Use your and imagination. He, well, if he ever releases that deleted scene, what is it like a ten minute sex, like graphic <laughs> sex scene or <laughs> something? You ever heard of that? Uh, I don't know if that's is that real. That's, he's that's, talked about it. Uh, it might not be ten minutes, but it is. There's a deleted graphic sex mm, sex scene. Fascinating. So you you call Harold. I think he's dead, right? Or not uh, Harold? Hal Ashby. He's dead. Right? Yeah, he's dead. We'll call him up and see but, if he'll Bud, give it Bud to Court him. may still be alive. Well, he was in Life Aquatic. That was so. a while ago. Yeah. Who knows? You call Bud Court and see if he wants to be on the podcast. We can do the Herald and Mod. We'll jump ahead the Ooh. one time only. Just hey, for... but Bud Court is 71 years old. He might be as old as Mod was. Uh, do you think he's on Twitter? Uh, we can Bud find Court. out pretty easily. I'm just looking her up. This is very important. Anyways, this yeah. movie that we hear, this movie. Oh, the real movie we're talking the about. The real right? movie we're talking about. So, <laughs> and then RJ, the movie just starts hammering you down with sadness and like yes. with misery as, mm-hmm. as uh, the relationship starts to reveal itself to others, coworkers just going on, talking about mm-hmm. how those people live, talking about the filth and Dirt, the stink, the stink, always the dirt. Oh, they, mm-hmm. as soon as they move in, it starts getting dirtier. It just follows them like a plume because it's like you're these people's entire understanding of the world is cartoons. Yeah, it's like, and they don't shower. It's like pig it's, pen. It's just yeah. like they just walk around. I'll have you know, he showers every night. No, not him. He's one of those foreigners, Jarrett, as they say in this show a lot. Oh yeah, stink, stinky. Yes. So uh, she t- she goes to tell her daughter and son-in-law who uh, I think I believe it's the son-in-law who's actually the director is, is Fassbender. I don't think I could be wrong on that. Which one? The one who cooks, kicks the TV? No, oh, that, that's oh, no, her the son. son-in-law. That's the, yeah, the son-in-law. I, believe, gotcha. I think that's what I read, read, which I was like, oh, I guess so. But yep. which is good because he's a loathsome man. It's good that he's playing that character. Why not? Uh, why not? Uh, mm mm-hmm. I don't check facts, so I, I I could be out to lunch on that. You're on the right podcast then exactly. if that's exactly uh, what you're going after. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, the movie gets kind of trucks along. They're they're mm-hmm. they're only they're getting mar- they're getting married. They go all sure. the way. And even Ali's friends are like, What the fuck are you doing? And this and like the those ladies back at the bar just talking about that slut, that old slut and that, that woman. Just, that, I mean, she's that, a pretty whore. nice lady. Oh, this is so nasty. It's so, it's so mean. And you're just like, yeah, what's going on? Why are they? Why are they riding them so hard? What what businesses of it is yours? Anything is other people's business, Jared. That's no. what I've come to learn. Uh, y- there's even the guy who runs the grocery just uh, across the street. He doesn't even want to serve him anymore. What a bunch of assholes! This this whole this whole community. Like, there's like one guy who's like, I don't care. Like I think he owns the building and lives on the top floor. Mm-hmm. Mr. Mr. Groiper or something like that. He doesn't care, but he he is, as you said, he's the only one because everyone everyone's like fuck this guy, and then they and leave. Fuck this old but, but then they go on a vacation, they go on a honeymoon, mm-hmm. they get away from it, and they come back, and uh, the tune of everyone's changed because now they're like, oh, I need something. I guess we should be nice to you now. Which mm. isn't that the way it is. <laughs> Well, I know a lot of the times when I'm hanging out with you, you're just like, you're like, I hate you. You ruined my life. Why are you doing this? Please show mercy. Stop. And I'm like, hey, relax, bud. 
But then when you're like, hey, can I – you're like, let me out. Give me a drink of water. Then you're all nice and stuff like that. Right. It's, it's a weird thing. Like I, I don't think it's super genuine, but uh, hey, that's how the world works. I've met a lot of assholes, and then it's they a, get real friendly once once in a while, and you're like, hmm. Hell of a tangent here. Hell of a tangent. Who, me? Well, I'm just telling, talking about relationships, Jared. Like, right. Ollie Fear Eats the Soul is all about relationships, and right. like you said, quid pro quo. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Tangents. Sure. It's... That's some somewhat loosely related, no, is no, it not? No, no, I'm pretty good at uh, reading so, this scene here. Sadly, um, this relationship starts to unravel, and it all sure. begins with a little bit of couscous. I mean, and and there's well, some you... and there's some weird stuff where Emmy's inviting her friends over, and uh, they're all feeling up Allie's muscles. <laughs> tell, uh, well, that, tell, so telling that... them to pop the shirt. Well, that's a scene too, though, where it's just like, well, he showers every night, and they're like, "No, you can't be serious." And it's like, "I am serious." He's a he's a good one. And they're like, "Hey, Ali, flex it out, baby." Yeah. And he does. It will. Uh, you got to give him credit, though. He does flex it out for them. But then he leaves, and they're like, "He's like, well, you know, those foreigners—they're so emotional. They just they they just can't control it." And he goes to that lady back at the bar because she gets him. There's no expe- some- there's no expectations there, except for some boning, I guess. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, things start just getting a little bit more miserable than it possibly was at this point. Sure. And uh, he starts blowing her off, and we get this like thing where Emmy just like you know she goes. It all comes back full circle. He's at the bar gambling away. She goes back. She orders a coke, and uh, she says, "Play the music." And as soon as the music plays, Ali's up on his feet. He goes over, immediately asks her to dance. And they're like, they're basically start spilling their guts to one another. Like, hey, we mm-hmm. can get through this. Things can get better. And then he kills over from a stomach ulcer. Because Yeah, but ulcers aren't the worst thing, right? No. Well, that's the thing is, but it's like the stress, the stress of this life mm-hmm. of, of living in this country is just going to keep happening. And no matter what happens, it just keeps coming back onto him. And it ends on this like real ambiguous note. Nothing solved. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing gained. It's just going to be like, yep, this is a relationship. This is what it is. Um, mm. So yeah, I I'm uh, a fan of this movie. I like this movie. Yep. Yep. Uh, I like. Uh, I think uh, Fastbinder's eye for cinematography, the way his movies look, are, mm-hmm. are pretty great. Um, and yeah, I don't know. The, this movie nails. Like I said, I kind of off the top. The sadness of the situation, like almost yeah. over, over, almost too much. But because it's a melodrama, it gets it goes even harder and more obvious to like mm-hmm. really illustrates like, yeah, this is like how people kind of act. Maybe they, but they're more secret about it though. They're they weren't. Oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're probably not this overt, but this might as well just be honest about this whole situation and the fact that like, yeah, they don't even view you as someone to respect to hide their racism about. They don't even care if you think that way because they're so right. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't hide your opinions on this podcast, do you? That's right. Yeah. Say what you feel, man. Be Don Cherry. Just say whatever you're thinking. Oh, no. Well, I mean, not in that sense. But for real, though, you do say whatever you feel. Yeah. But, I I mean, you're not like – you don't have opinions that uh, are bad. So (laughs) not usually. I mean, you do like some weird movies. RJ. Yo. What did you think? Of this alley, souls being eaten by fear. I was a little bit misled by the title. I thought there was some more wild shit happening in this thing. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like a pretty crazy title. I mean, I get it, having watched it. But at the same time, I was like, I thought there was going to be like some ghosts and shit in this thing. Like, there wasn't. Uh, I looked into it a little bit. And I was like, Douglas Sirk, right on. I like those movies. I like those melodramas. And I actually, it was, I really tried to sell this to Andrea because I think she would have liked it. And I was like, oh, it's this romance movie, summer winter relationship. And it's also an old white lady and a young uh, Moroccan man. And they're getting shit because people don't like that. And she was like, ooh, that sounds good. I was like, it's got subtitles. And she's like, Argh. I was like, God damn it. Because it's just, when I watched it, you know, she's like, I'm not into that. And I was like, okay. I think I do think she would have liked it. 
I liked it. I thought it was pretty good, man. Uh, so I went into this, no expectations. Mm-hmm. I've heard of this Fassbender. Uh, not Michael Fassbender, but, uh, you know, Fassbender. Yeah, not Magneto. Like, right, not Magneto or Long Dick Man from Shame. But I was like, you know what? I'll, uh, I've heard his name before, and it sounds like he's a, a slam dunk of a guy. I don't know if I don't agree with all the slam dunks, but uh, I liked it. Um, I like the story one because this is kind of stuff that I, I do mm-hmm. like, and especially I was thinking about compared to say uh, last week with Hiroshima, Hiroshima Monomore. Yeah. I was thinking about that a lot because that was the thing where I was like, well, this is a similar similar kind of movie where it's just like romance love story between these two people uh with this other circumstance like weighing in on them uh but when we talked last week about that i was like but i never really bought it and i was like and i never really i never really wanted wanted to in that movie where i was like i'm rooting for these guys whatever or anything like that uh, but this movie, it just kind of felt a little bit easier for me. Um, like, I do feel like the characters play exaggerated versions of actual people. Like, Ali, sometimes, the way he responds to stuff. And that's, like, also just, like, second language things. But he he's a little stiff. Mm-hmm. And when he is with people, he's a little stiff. But I was like, you know, some people in real life are a little stiff. I and found, they, they emote like that. I, I think I remember that striking me more the first time I watched it. Watching it the second time, I was fine with that. Yeah. It, it seemed to... Yeah, yeah, no, it didn't It didn't bother me at all. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, I, I meet people like that every day where they, they just give off a strange... Or not even strange, like a different presence where it's very shut off and you're like okay so it it didn't bother me at all but uh my my whole point of all that was hiroshima monomore we we discussed our problems with that last week but i didn't really feel that with all the fear eats the soul um and like this movie didn't like blow my mind or anything like that but i watched it and i was like yeah i like that it's a good show because i like i like the love story because i'm a little romantic at heart uh and i also uh, I just, I mean, it's, I think it's one of those things like it's, it's topical today. It was topical then and it's going to be topical in probably 20 years still. Like, I feel like these things don't change as much as the world is trying to. Do you remember when people lost their mind about that Tide commercial? Which one? The one with a, I believe it was a black man and a white woman in marital bliss. I, I don't, but I mean, I'm not surprised by it. Yeah, there's that people, there was, it's like I don't know ads that people flipped out at. Yeah, see, things don't change. Yeah. <laughs> things things don't change, and that and yeah, exactly. That's they do, so, but th- sometimes they just don't. Sadly. Well, I mean, general perception and like different opinion changes on that, but you're never going to be rid of the or of like the certain people who who. F- fight or are like against that kind of thing and like i think that that's what this movie shows too like it's not it's not always these grand gestures like it's not um they didn't like burn the person's house down because they're like we don't like your relationship yeah well because this is like this is this is this is pretty aggressive stuff and i mean there's like there's also like a the one thing that people talk about these days microaggressions which are like yes. kind of like small things that aren't obvious, but they're felt in a different way. But like this is like pretty overt. Uh, yeah, well, like, I, right. and I think there are a lot like when he gets turned away from the store, like when the ladies just don't talk to the other lady. Yeah, that's like okay. Those are those are out there. But I also thought, I also thought those were kind of the subtle microaggressions too, because it's uh, not like I it's think, not like the yeah. sly comments, because well, that's what you would expect. Well, the but. microaggressions are the things where people just ask questions, like, and they ask things, and you would like, why are you asking me that? This is just like full on, like we're going to like ostracize you and like turn you into a pariah in our community. That goes mm-hmm. beyond a microaggression. A little bit, no. a little bit, yeah. And but and like that, that's all I mean by that. Where it's like, when did this movie come out? Seventy four. Seventy four. So that is 40, 45 years yeah. ago. It was an issue then. Things haven't changed that much now. I mean, like you said, things do change. People are a lot more accepting of this, but those people won't ever go away. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
I mean, it, maybe well, eventually. Because it's like, cause not only is not it like, th- not only is it kind of like the the uh, as uh, I have to still read the Oliver Granger email, uh, who mm. begins with a message from a mixed race expert. Ah, uh, yes. Well, and and like that's the thing too. It's like it's all about context because yeah. some people won't have the same experience. Like, depending where you are and what your situation is, you might never feel anything like this. And mm. I, I'm like, I don't know. I'm not in a mixed. Well, because on uh, top of that, you also have the age element too for people. Yeah, yeah. I, I dated someone who was the same ethnicity of me, and we're eight months apart. So I, I, I don't really have. You're, you're, you have no uh, skin in this game. Yeah, I got no skin in the game. I got no box to stand on. But yeah. it's just like, I don't know. I talk to people. I, I hear <laughs> people who are just like. It's like what you said one time where people who get really comfortable with you all of a sudden, they're like, oh, you know, these guys. And you're like, whoa, like, are, you, hey, are, you, hey, you're hey. Like, are you talking to me? <laughs> um, so it's my my point of all that was I get it. it's it's top. It was topical then it, and it's topical now. And I don't think it's going to change for any time in the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's just how it is. But I did. I did like the movie. I think Fassbender does. Uh, I do think he he presents the stuff in a good way where sometimes he kind of he'll give you a, like, I don't know how to phrase this right. It's not like a clue or a hint, but the way that he shows the, like the camera moves where when he wants to go talk to her and like spend the night with her, you know, it just moves from him to the door for, her and it kind of holds there for right. not, not like 12 v- minutes. Visual like storytelling. Smash. Yeah. It's just visual storytelling because you, oh. you get the message oh. there. You're like, Oh, he wants to go. I think the bit, the one that I think about right now off the top of my head is there's like this particular shot of uh, Emmy when she's kind of being uh, isolated from the her coworkers and like the mm. way the bars kind of separate her on the when she's sitting there on the, on the steps. So great. And then you get this call back later when now there's like, oh, the one woman got fired because she was stealing. And now, now we're all good because she was the one that was like riling us all up. But now there's this like young Yugoslavian woman and they're like, oh, she doesn't even understand what we're talking about. And we're talking about how much money we get paid. She gets paid less than us. And so let's just go away from her and it's like because it's like well she's a she's a white woman she's a, and, but at the same time it's like oh she's younger and she's also from a different country so it's just like this nationalist element too and you're just like uh it's so sad because like she gives this like really sweet smile because she doesn't really she either like she maybe she only politely understands or doesn't understand at all she's just like hi it's just like oh this movie this keeps mm. hammering you um Let me read this Oliver Granger email, though, that I saved for the review. Okay. Message from a mixed race expert. Hi there, creeps. In honor of Ali Furious the Soul, I thought you would want to hear that this shit still goes on. Last week, Rupa, Mm. her parents, and I went to an Indian restaurant. I said, I have a booking for four. The waitress was like, great. Are you waiting for the other three? Then someone came and tried to serve Rupa and her parents separately. (laughs) <laughs> Once at a local fast food restaurant, an Indian girl was serving. I asked for a spicy burger, and Rupa asked for a mild. The server couldn't handle it and said, it should be the other way around. The spicy food thing is one of my mm. favorite racial prejudices. Restaurants constantly make Rupa's food spicy without asking her, and they tell her they do it too, expecting praise for taking the initiative. This is all fun stuff, though, that I generally enjoy, and I hope no one has to go through the shit in this film, <laughs> even though I think the film handled it all poorly, and I am a self-proclaimed mm. interracial expert, so I would know. Wow. <laughs> wow. I I wonder what he, uh, he doesn't like about it, like how it was handled. I'm like, I... I feel like it's a little different in the way that he presents it, but I was on board with it. I had no issue with it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just me. Yeah. Oliver. Hey, RJ. Mm-hmm. Yo. You, you want to hear some some dark shit? Okay. So I was looking up the actor, uh, El Hadi Ben Salim, okay? Okay. Let's talk about him. Who is this? Mm-hmm. Who is this man that I've, I've I've seen many people refer to how stiff he is and how his bad acting kind of ruins the movie for him. So it's like, where did this guy come from? So from Wikipedia, Salem was born uh, Idi Hamin Ben Salim Mabarak Mohammed Masafa in a small village in Morocco, the child of a Berber family. At the age of fifteen, he married and eventually had five children. Salim, mm-hmm. his wife, and children lived near the Atlas Mountains. By the early nineteen seventies, Salem had left his wife and children and had moved to Europe. He met director Rainer Werner 
Fassbinder at a gay bathhouse in Paris in early 1971, and the two began a relationship. That should be noted that Fassbinder was uh, a gay man. He moved mm-hmm. to Germany with Fassbinder and became part of the film's entourage. Uh, he would go on to play several minor roles in Fassbinder's films. Fassbinder eventually cast Salim in the lead role in Ali Fury Eats the Soul, a film that explores racism in post-World War II Germany. In the film, uh, Salim portrays a Moroccan immigrant living in Germany who begins a relationship with an older German woman whom he eventually marries. The film brought Fassbinder worldwide critical acclaim and the role of Ali became the one for which Salim is best known. While Salim and Fassbinder were living together in Germany, Salim brought his two sons to live with them. This arrangement did not last long, as the children were unprepared for life in a different culture, and Salim and Fassbinder were not up to the task of raising children. Both frequently drank and took drugs and left the children with others. One of Salim's sons returned to his mother in Morocco, while the other went to a different home, and finally a reformatory. Salim and Fassbinder's relationship was reportedly tumultuous. They fought frequently, due in part to Salim's short temper, which turned violent when he drank. In 1974, Fassbinder broke off the relationship due to Salim's violence and drinking. After the breakup, Salim began drinking more heavily. Director Daniel Schmidt, one of Fassbinder's mm-hmm. close friends, later told Roger Ebert that shortly after the breakup, Salim got drunk and went to a quote, went to a place in Berlin and stabbed three people. Salim then returned to Fassbinder uh-huh. and told him, you don't have to be afraid anymore. And then on the next line, subject line, death. After the stabbings, none of which were fatal, Salim fled to France, aided by Fassbinder and his friends. Schmidt later mm-hmm. recalled that Salim had to be virtually smuggled out of Germany and that Fassbinder cried the entire time they were driving Salim out of Berlin. While in France, Salim was arrested and jailed. While in custody at a prison in Nimes in 1977, Salim hanged himself. News of Salim's death was kept from Fassbinder for years. He did not learn of his former lover's death until shortly before his own death in 1982. Um, you got this on the internet? Yeah, yeah. So he he died three years after this movie came out. You think he was okay? <laughs> Clearly not. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, Fastbinder. Uh, he so he died in eighty two at the age of thirty seven from a lethal cocktail of cocaine and barbiturates. Uh, yeah. He, and but before he died, he made like forty feature films, two TV series, three short films, four video productions, and f- twenty four plays. And RJ, in mm-hmm. like like a month or a couple months from now, or actually, God, less like just about less than two months, we're going to be talking three more of his movies. Uh, I I did see that. So, I mean, I think it's good that you got those uh, details out now. Um. I'm a little bit uh, taken aback by all that. I don't really know what to say. No. I Some dark I, stuff. I really only knew this on, like right before we were recording. And I'm like, oh, huh. I should uh, just click around a little bit. And it's like, sure. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I mean, the thing about that, Jer, and the thing that you need to know is that I think the same thing might happen to you and me. Uh-oh. I don't want to like you know, jump to any conclusions, but it's possible. Just don't stab people, RJ. Well, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, I don't think it's a bad show. That's my opinion. Yeah. So I, I, I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You want to find out who hates it? Yeah, might as well. Okay, then. We got WikiCat. Okay. Half a star. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the wrong audience for this movie. I don't understand the great ratings. I feel so disappointed. Is it a social commentary? A black comedy? A mellow? Goodness. I hate this movie. And I wish I would tell myself that even before I watch this. Thanks for nothing. I mean, I don't think it needs to be a hard sell into any of those categories, if you no. ask me. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's a melodrama that's shot like a German new wave film. Mm-hmm. Uh, this WikiCat person is like, I don't know if they're just, well, they're not, it's, they're not a very active account. They only have 20 movies logged. 
So, so it's all these people that uh, – these are the movies that broke them, I guess. They start accounts. They give Coraline five stars and Tangled five stars. And then they go, you know what? I'm just going to watch Ali. Fear eats the soul. Or I have to let you know. I hate this movie. Yeah. And, like, that's that's all it is. It's very strange, Yeah, these people. One star, Fariz Akbar. Okay. I've mixed feelings when I watch it for the first time. I'm not really sure I uh, sure did I liked it or not, so I try to give this film another shot today. Hope I'll like it, or I will dislike it. So there's a little bit of broken English going on here. Oh. I'm surprised how bad it was when I revisited it. I was uncomfortable mm-hmm. while watching it. Well, not every film has to be comfortable to be great, but this film is more like irritating because there's so much flaws in this film. The highlight of the flaws is the acting, mm-hmm. except Bridget Mira's acting as Emmy. Almost all of the acting was nearly unwatchable. All of them can't make me commiserate or even make me care, which is which is was bad for a melodrama when audience emotions is a benchmark of a mellow. I've never hmm. heard everyone's using this mellow word all of a sudden. I, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Well, it's, it's short for melodrama, but I've never heard anyone say it's mellow. The pacing is also terrible. Makes 90 mm. minutes feel like three hours. Oh, I disagree strongly mm-hmm. with that. This movie mm-hmm. is... Uh, Really easy to watch. Also, the use of locations was so monotone, though that there was though there were some great shots. I mean, it's, it's a small movie. They they shot it in like two weeks. Yeah, I I'm not sure I am. I understand a lot of these criticisms and the story. I liked Fastbinder's intention to show the condition of racism in post Nazi Germany in this film, uh, but the post. but but the plot suddenly becomes unfocused, makes me confused. For example, the maid's affair with Ali. Why is she suddenly involved with no intention or explanation whatsoever? Because that's mm-hmm. love, baby. And the ending. Well, it was one of the most weirdest twists I've ever seen. I still have intention to watch more Fastbinder. I liked World on a Wire, but sorry, I found this film nearly unwatchable. I mean, I think that's a little harsh. The only five-star movie uh, Fariz gave was for All That Jazz. I think all they do is give one-star reviews, Jared. Oh. Here's some one-star films. The Dark Knight, Shawshank Redemption, Bob La Fambla, okay. 400 Blows, uh, does, does this person romance, write reviews Annie for Hall, each of these? Solar, uh, nope. Solaris. Oh. Um, what else we got? Heat, one star. Uh, Umberto D. Rafifi, Spinal Tap, hey, we're watching all one, Umberto one, D one in star. Two weeks. Yes, we are. Three weeks. Uh, the Wrestler, one star. Um, Fistful of Dollars, one star. Aguirre, Wrath of God, one star. Like Glengarry okay. Glen Ross, uh, one I'm, star. I, I'm good. Yeah, it's... That's all they do is they just give one star reviews. But they write a review for this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Finally, one and a half star from Jess. Okay. I'm honestly convinced everyone on here is giving this high rating on account of it being a fast binder because this was uh not good. The acting mm. is bad, the dialogue clunky and heavy handed, and don't even get me started on the ridiculousness of centering a story about the tribulations of racism on a white woman. Ali is given no interiority, and overall, it's a first grade level analysis of overt bigotry, which may have been groundbreaking at the time of production, but is now incredibly outdated and borders on offensive. You know what I think is offensive? Five stars for Call Me By Your Name. As always, they also gave that lemonade Beyonce thing five stars, which I feel like a lot of people gave that thing five stars, but oh, why? And here we are now. And here we are now. But call me by your name, five stars. That other thing, five stars. Blade Runner 2049, five stars. La La Land? Is La La Land in there? Uh, It wasn't, but uh, this person also gave Blue Velvet a half a star. Oh, so I'm not really sure what that's about. And then other one star movies, one star movies are like Django, and I don't know. It's just it's stuff that aren't like Captain Fantastic, that Viggo Mortensen. It's not a one star movie. It's not gonna, it's not amazing, but it's it's definitely not a one star movie. So just settle down, guys. Just relax. Just relax. Well, there you have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Don't don't. Don't go to Germany. Which part? The west part for sure, but I think that's not a problem anymore. Um, That wall came down. Could be. No. I don't know. You tell me. Hang out. Watch Possession. 
Mm, with a uh, famed Jurassic Park actor, Jeff Goldblum? <laughs> Not quite. Huh. After the break, mm-hmm. we've got stomach ulcers. I already beat you to that one, bud. <laughs> 